Taxonomy is not just classifying and categorizing things, it is telling us a story. The beautiful story of all life on earth. The science of taxonomy is understanding how all these living organisms hang on to this tree of life. We call it the phylogenetic tree and this tree is going to give us some method to the madness. The madness of the fact that there are over a zillion different organisms invading every inch of this earth. Biologists have used the taxonomic system to classify all organisms on earth and this is sometimes called the phylogenetic tree, the tree of life. So it shows the evolutionary relationships between all living species. Evolution, new word, what does it mean? Evolution is just a basic idea that life forms that we have seen today or organisms that we actually see today have evolved or changed over time or changes have happened in them that have made them better adapt to their environment. Okay, This happens when changes happen in the genes of the organism making the offspring actually even better for the survival. So I am going to explain evolution to you with one small story so that you understand how the better species have survived over time and the others have reduced in number drastically or actually become extinct. Let's go back to the time of the Industrial Revolution in England, sometime in the early 1800s. There is this little creature, Biston Betularia typica, a beautiful name that will add some drama to this story, commonly called a light-colored peppered moth. Mr. Moth hangs out on the tree trunks of England. The lichens on the trees blend with the color of its wings, keep lurking predators away from sighting it and let it live a peaceful, uninterrupted life. But all of a sudden, things start getting really dark around here. With all the coal-powered factories spitting out soot into the air, the trees go from looking like this to looking like this. Mr. Moth has a distant cousin, Biston Betularia Carbonaria, who looks like this. Now, as time passes, Mr. Moth can see that there are more moths who look like his cousin than like him. At the start of the Industrial Revolution, only 2% of the moths were like Mr. Moth's cousin. But by 1895, it will be 95%. You would have guessed that since the lighter colored moths are not camouflaged by the trees anymore, they are more susceptible to be a nice dinner for predating birds. The black moths are more well hidden now and reproduce more often because they are eaten less often and have black baby moths and all of a sudden there are very 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 few moths like Mr. Moth. In fact, compared to 2% black moths in 1848, as I told you, it was 95% later. You might have heard of Charles Darwin, the very very famous scientist who answered a very very important question about where we all have come from. He went on a five-year cruise, not a cruise really, a scientific expedition all over the place to observe different organisms. Charles had an amazing life. He traveled the world, saw volcanoes explode and earthquakes. He rode on the back of giant tortoises and went hunting for ostriches. When he came home, he changed the way we actually think about living organisms. In spite of suffering from you know, severe seasickness, he diligently wrote down volumes of material on his findings and observations. And he, when he looked back on those journals, he hit upon some important ideas that made him actually come up with all these theories in a very important book or a very famous book, I'll say, The Origin of Species. And one famous observation of Darwin was on the finches of these islands called the Galapagos Islands. He noticed something very, very interesting. For a dozen varieties of finches and observed that there were differences between them and marked differences in the way the beaks were shaped uh, in finches on the different islands. The beaks were adapted based on the type of food available in that island. So what did he observe? If there were hard seeds, the beaks were thick. If there were insects, the beaks were skinny and pointed. And if there were fruit with hard coverings like, say, cactus fruit, then the beaks were hard so that it could puncture the fruit skin. This variation would show how the birds adapted themselves to superior variations based on the needs of the environment they were in. They increased their fitness and this would form the crux of the theory of natural selection.
So what the origin of species actually tells us is very important. It tells you that you have descended from different microorganisms and ultimately from one prokaryotic microorganism 3.8 billion years ago. And so it would not be wrong to say that the whole world is one big family. This tree represents the evolutionary relationships between all living organisms. Species actually keep getting discovered all the time. So the 8 million species can become 10, 12 or even 50 million. All this gives scientists a really hard time because it actually gives them so many more organisms to keep track of actually. Now this is the system that we've been using for 250 years but as I told you species keep getting discovered all the time. Maybe some new species gets discovered again that doesn't fit in. Space needs to be made in the street to accommodate that. And just maybe by the time you teach biology to your students, the tree may look a bit different. But that's the beauty of taxonomy. If you like this video and want to watch many many more amazing videos like these, like and subscribe to our channel now.